So for us here, we don't even focus on the we don't want to. All we focus on is what is it that you want to create? And then we begin helping the client creating something that they want. And it's different for everybody. We all come from different walk of life and, you know, we all want something different. So we work with the client, finding out what the goal should be. And one thing that we really try to help the client to find out is find something that is really true to yourself. As a young mother, I experienced a paradigm shift that transformed how I saw education and ultimately the world around me. I started this podcast, The Luminous Mind, to connect with and learn from people who are disrupting the status quo in how they learn, educate, and live in the world around them. Prepare for a paradigm shift. Light a candle. Light your world. Benjamin Franklin said, instead of cursing the darkness, light a candle. You're listening to The Luminous Mind with your host, Rebecca Bowman. Today's fire starter is Lucy LeBlanc. Lucy is an entrepreneur, author, and partner with the Proctor Gallagher Institute and Magnetic Mind Rapid Recode Institute. Lucy joined the Proctor Gallagher Institute, where she studied and graduated in 2016. She is a certified thinking into results consultant, teaching what Bob Proctor has been studying and teaching for almost 60 years. Lucy has recently got certified as a magnetic mind super conscious creator coach, a marvelous technique to rewire your brain in minutes. This revolutionary technique is the world's breakthrough in neuroscience to magically manifest and become a conscious creator. Some people consumed by fear and governed by a weak character barely get to live one life to its fullest. They never follow their hearts, never take risks, and they end up settling in safe but unfulfilling realities. Her own life, in contrast, seems more like 10 different ones sewn together by her self-confidence and driven by the belief that life is not a dress rehearsal. Well, welcome to the Luminous Mind, Lucy. Thank you so much for having me. It's it's so exciting to share my uh, knowledge with uh, all of you. I am so excited for you to share your knowledge with us as well, because I think just with our little bit of discussion and the study that I've done with you, you're a perfect fit for the luminous mind and what we try to accomplish here. But before we get into the work that you've been doing, why don't you go ahead and briefly tell our audience a little bit more about yourself? Well, my name is Lucie Leblanc. I'm a wellness coach. I began doing fitness coaching in the early 2000s. And then uh, I became a Pilates instructor, yoga instructor, and um, I opened my own studio in the 2012. And then uh, I live in Northern California with my family. I have three young adult uh, children. And uh, my husband is from Argentina, and we've been living in Northern California for the last uh, 22 years. Okay, but you did tell me that you are French Canadian, is that right? That's where we're yeah, getting correct. The, you have a beautiful accent. <laughs> so, Thank you so, much. Uh, so here I have a very Western twang and we have Lucy that has this amazing accent, but I would love to know more background. You said you started as a fitness coach, but we're going to talk a lot more about your magnetic mind, subconscious creator, that kind of coaching as well. So give me the background into, you know, how you went from like this fitness coach moving into, you know, working with that subconscious mind creator coaching. Well, uh, for me, it has been a 14 years journey. And after reading and seeing The Secret in 2006, uh, I began working on myself because I was not in a very good place. And uh, I read just about all of the self-improvement books there is out there. I started working with myself, hiring uh, coaches, personal uh, development mentors, because I, I knew I was really happy with what I had accomplished. I came here in the United States in the 1980s with $500 in my pocket, and I kind of built myself up. And uh, my husband was also in the same situation. So, uh, but um, I've always 
uh, wanted to have more. So I'm the type of woman that, uh, you know, I'm always setting goals. And once I reach my goal, I move on to the other goal. But, you know, working with a personal development coach was very beneficial. It really made me aware of a lot of things. But the thing is, um, I was creating short-term success, you know, and I was never able to hold on to whatever I was creating. And um, I created multiple successful business, but I felt like I was always oscillating. My life felt like a roller coaster. You know, I would uh, get a little bit of success and then back again to the same uh, where I started. It was a one step forward and one step back. And so I always felt like I was fighting myself. And each time something went wrong, I, I would come up with, okay, I need to work on myself. I need to fix myself. But with the magnetic mind, I realized that, you know, it's not me that I have to fix myself. It's more like my past. Mm -hmm. And uh, everything is linked to our past. Oftentimes we wonder why some people are more successful than others. And the thing is, when I met my mentor, Chris Duncan from the magnetic mind, he explained to me that there was nothing wrong with me. And what I needed to understand is that I must be it before I see it. And that's so important to be in the emotion before you manifest it, because you have to train your body to really uh, feel what it feels like to be successful, abundant, um, you know, in a great relationship, healthy. And that was really, it really kind of uh, shook me a little bit because I was always working so hard to accomplish my desire and my goals. And I wasn't really thinking about my emotion. You know, I was drowning myself in work. So then I began uh, the process of magnetic mind. And, you know, the personal development word is a little broken in some ways because uh, my mentor, Chris Duncan, is a billionaire and he was in the same situation than me. And a lot of people out there, when we reach out to work with mentors, we think there's something wrong with us and we need to fix ourselves in order to be successful. We don't have to do that. You don't even need to fix yourself because in order to create what it is that you want to create, it's all in the structure. Uh, success is not personal, it's structural. And so it kind of confused me because I had studied a lot of great uh, philosopher and also work with great, you know, very well renowned uh, personal development coach. He said, look at the most successful people in the world, people that have created massive success and wealth, like Lady Gaga, Warren Buffett, uh, Bill Gates, and Oprah Winfrey. These people didn't come from a place that needed to be fixing themselves. Instead, they just went for the big win and nothing mattered. They were resilient and didn't let their past, uh, you know, stop them from reaching their big goal. And I think that's the main problem with our society is we all come with baggage and we all come with traumas. And one thing that we don't realize is that not only you're carrying your traumas throughout your life, but you're also carrying the traumas of your parents, grandparents, and all your ancestors. And oftentimes when you reach your goal, you, you find yourself a little closer and all of a sudden you get these pattern kicking in, like you're afraid, you, you feel uh, not worthy enough to uh, get that, you feel you don't deserve it. And all those are due to traumas that has happened in the past. And these are really the traumas that we need to get rid of. And what is great about the magnetic mind philosophy is that we can recode all these traumas within minutes by doing rapid recode. And uh, so this is why it's very, very efficient. And, you know, you get a, a recode and within minutes, you're going to feel, you know, the resistance going down and uh, eventually you can, you know, move forward closer and closer towards your goal and your desired reality. Well, that's interesting. Well, and I noticed too that you're kind of connected to Bob Proctor. Is he the developer of the magnetic mind? Like uh, you talk about it like it is a program that you work with. 
Do you want to kind of expound on that and how you're connected to that as well? Sure, of course. Well, Bob Proctor teaches a technique called the stick person, and it's to recondition your uh, conscious and your subconscious. And this is done the hard way, you know, through affirmation, uh, bringing more positive thoughts, you know, setting goals a little more bigger than you would normally set a goal. But the magnetic mind is a different process. Uh, Bob Proctor taught me about the conscious and the subconscious mind. And that's what happened in the personal development world. So most coaches approach this, the way to reprogram your subconscious mind, really the hard way through your conscious and subconscious. But the thing is, the conscious and the subconscious mind, they're very stubborn. They don't want to change Mm -hmm. at all. So it's very difficult to change through affirmation and uh, meditation. And so what happened is that was my problem. I was working really hard on reconditioning my subconscious. But as soon as you slack off a little bit, it's like fitness. You know, if you Mm -hmm. take a few days off, then you have to catch up a little bit later on in your training. And it's so, back to that, like one step, two step. Back that's that right. That's thing right. As well. Okay. And it was like, I was constantly telling myself affirmation and at some point it gets a little exhausting. Mm-hmm. And when you keep telling affirmation, you kind of lie to yourself. You're trying to make it stick. And like I said, the subconscious mind and the conscious mind, they don't really want to change. So they will always, always fight back. And it's like an auto pilot in some ways, you know, you try to do something else and then, you know, your subconscious tries to bring you back into the uh, same path that you've always used. The thing about our brain is always going to keep us in a safe environment and always propel us towards the path of least resistance. So therefore, you are always going to take decision according to what you feel comfortable with. And then therefore, it's kind of hard to create something bigger or greater that you've created before. But the thing is about when we work with the magnetic mind process, we work with the superconscious. So there is three memories, the self-conscious, which is, you know, your ego. And your self-conscious is created when you were a child in the first four, five or six years of your childhood. And then your unconscious is what makes you, uh, it's kind of your autopilot in some ways. And so those are the first two memories. The third memory is a superconscious memory. Unlike the unconscious and the self-conscious, this superconscious is willing to change. However, most people don't ever talk about the superconscious. And in order to connect with your superconscious, it's only as you would be talking with a person. And the superconscious is willing to change and is just waiting there. It's the third level sitting below the unconscious and the subconscious and it's waiting and waiting. And the superconscious is your memory. It's your uh, intelligence, it's your genius. And it remembers every single things about you your previous life and everything that's been passed down from your ancestor and your whatever is your DNA. So once you connect to your superconscious, that's when we do some rapid recode. And it's a process similar to a meditation. Mm -hmm. And it's very safe. There's no hypnosis. The client is aware the whole time. And we go in and we recode the superconscious And we get rid of the traumas, the negative emotions that are really keeping us from reaching our full potential. And of course, this is something that you do on a regular basis. And usually when you do this process for about six months to 12 months, you really can recreate a new identity. And then... um, when you do the rapid recode, you knock down all the boulders, all the obstacles that are in your way to reaching your goal. We create 
resistance that will make you flow towards your goal. And that's what I was really, really shocked to learn. And also by doing the process myself, I had major breakthroughs within weeks of just doing the rapid recode. Unlike doing my reprogramming myself, it takes time. And sometimes you get massive breakthrough, but then again, you're back to the same where you started. And when you do this with people that have been, uh, you know, working with therapists or psychologists or, you know, people that have really major issues in life, these boulders just come down. We knock them down and the person is able to really become free and uh, really move forward and create something that the client wants to create. That's interesting. I have actually done rapid recall therapy. You know, I did work with a therapist for a while and I hated therapy because it was just a constantly like what you're thinking today. And, and so sometimes it was like recalling like on previous days and I just felt like it wasn't making a lot of progress, but the rapid, well, I, it was actually rapid eye therapy and, but it sounds like the same kind of thing. Is that what you're talking about? Like we're where you're doing, I know you're not, you talked about how you don't have to, you're not unconscious or anything, but there's the therapy where they're kind of moving an object in front of your face, but they're also saying like, you know, more positive things about you, or I don't know how to describe it. Is that kind of the same kind of thing that you're talking about? Or Mm, doesn't sound like it because um, tell me about what you do with your clients. (laughs) Okay. So what you are saying about therapy is very common because what you focus on is what you will attract. That's what you will create. And that's what will show up in your life. So that's why therapy sometimes might not be working. It might work for some people, but sometimes it takes way too much time. Yeah, you it's know? just driving yeah. up the past, I always felt like. I mean, just and it just didn't help me at all. <laughs> okay, go ahead. So what we do with our client, instead of focusing on to what they don't want, And that's usually the first thing that we have to let people know when we start working with our uh, new client. People are usually inclined to speak, well, I don't want to be uh, lonely. I I, I don't want to be struggling financially anymore. So for us here, we don't even focus on the we don't want to. All we focus on is what is it that you want to create? And then we begin helping the client creating something that they want. And it's different for everybody. We all come from different walk of life and, you know, we all want something different. So we work with the client, finding out what the goal should be. And one thing that we really try to help the client to find out is find something that is really true to yourself. You know, sometimes People want to do something and they go out and they ask uh, people, what do you think? And, you know, when it comes to creating a life that you love, I think no one can really tell you what you should be doing. (laughs) You know, (laughs) we really dig deep with the client. First of all, we have a set of questions that when we work with a client, so we can Uh, discover what is the resistance that is keeping them from uh, moving forward or really creating the life that they want. So we choose a goal that is true to the client. And then by asking all these questions, we create a structural tension. We know what's in the way and we will know what to um, focus on when we go to do the rapid recall. And the third thing we do is we have to create emotion of the end result. So what I was saying earlier is you have to feel it before you be it. So those are of the reason why people don't get what they want. They want to have more money, but they're struggling financially and they're focusing on their debt, on their bills and things like that. So if you want to be abundant, you have to feel abundant right now. And it doesn't matter if your bank account is to $5, you have to find ways that will make you feel abundant because being abundant is not only a matter of money. It can be Mm -hmm. your family, it can be where you live, it can be your values. And so 
we help the client realize what they can find in order to make them feel what they want to feel at the end result. And then we unplug and recode. Unplugging is we ask the question about why you think you've been stuck. What makes you think that you cannot reach that goal and things like that. So we dig really deep and find out what is the resistance, the, the, uh, the obstacle or the boulder that are really being between the client and the goal. And then after that, we take obviously align the action because you know if you never do anything to reach a goal, it's wishful thinking. Mm -hmm. And we do this in group. But what is so wonderful about this process is that after one recode, you're gonna feel it right away. So it's not like you know in personal development. I remember you know sometimes it can be time consuming. You know you have to read certain things, you have to watch certain videos. And it takes time and it's not everybody that is willing to take an hour every day, you know, to work on themselves. But at least with the magnetic uh, rapid recode is you sit there and you listen to my voice, you listen to the uh, direction, and then we go in and really work on your super conscious to clear everything up. It's like a major spring cleaning. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. That's amazing. You have to do this in person, obviously. This isn't something you can do online with people? Yes, or? Everything, everything is done online. Oh, uh, okay. It is done. And um, some people like to work one-on-one, -on -one, but uh, it's as efficient as if you uh, work in a group. Everything is kind of personal. It's not mm -hmm. like people are telling everything during the presentation. But, you know, each training, we work on something different. It could be about money, it could be about relationship. So that way we kind of uh, help everybody and, you know, mix in because most people usually want different things. You know, they want their relationship to be uh, thriving. They want to be financially independent, healthy. And uh, so it's done through um, Zoom. Everything is recorded. And when you uh, want to work on yourself by yourself, you can just go back and do the recode because the recode are like meditation. They are critical to reach your goal and really to recode yourself. That's amazing. Well, it does, like I said, it, it sounds so similar to some of the other, the therapy that I did and I found it so much more helpful. Do you ever find though, you know, even though everybody has a different place that they want to be, do you feel like there are common misconceptions that many people have about not being successful or being able to change their brain or change their mindset? Well, this comes to, uh, you know, the way you were raised. And mm -hmm. like I said earlier, the five or six first year of your life, this is really when you are conditioned. Mm -hmm. So whatever trauma that happened at the time, you know, you will carry those trauma. And also one thing that uh, you were mentioning before regarding school, it's like um, parents are the first teacher. And, you know, if you want your child to do certain things and if you don't do them yourself, it's going to be very difficult to, you know, get your children to do that because we lead through example. And also our DNA everything is passed down. You know, we do look physically alike, like our parents, but also your way of thinking, your health, everything is pretty much passed down from one generation to the other. And oftentimes, when you look at that, children will do pretty much the same than their parents, unless, uh, you know, Sometimes they're in a family, there's one or two children that are more resilient and they will be a little bit more stubborn and want to do something different. So they move on and, you know, there's sometimes there's people that are they're the first millionaire in their family. It's because, you know, they were a little different. They mm -hmm. had different desire and they believe in themselves and they went for it. But the thing is, you know, everything is passed down from your parents and, you know, um, parents are just the role model. So mm -hmm. it's very important that uh, oftentimes parents can work on themselves. For example, when the parents do rapid recode and they knock down their boulder, their children, without really doing it, will uh, have result out of this because yeah. 
you know, the trauma is not there anymore. And that's when the first few years of our lives, that's when our belief system is created and our limitation and beliefs are created because uh, when we're born, we're perfect. But as we get a little older, we realize that we are becoming our own individual. So oftentimes we create ideas or beliefs to be able to cope with those um, emotional um, roller coaster that the children go through because their brain is so little developed that they cannot really deal with uh, traumas that adults deal with. So they create little belief. For example, okay, if you have parents that are busy and then uh, the children want attention from their parents, oftentimes they might misbehave because they know that if I misbehave, I get my parents' attention. So those type of things create a belief for the child that if I misbehave, I'm getting attention. And then, you know, all our belief system is created due to some sort of traumas or events or experience that we had through our lives. So yes, it's very important that the parent, you know, if they want to uh, get their children eating healthy, they have to eat healthy mm-hmm. themselves. You know, yes. it's, kind of a, it's all a domino effect. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Now to take a break. Are you new to homeschooling? Maybe you're a veteran homeschooler and just need some continued encouragement. I'm so happy to announce that the Idaho Freedom Action is sponsoring me and offering a free webinar. For a couple of years, I've been teaching coaching classes for an online school, and this year, in an effort to reach a larger demographic, I'm opening these courses up to everyone. These courses help give us a broader vision and better family relationships as we work through creating self-directed love of learning families. We are holding these classes every Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Mountain Time through the school year. To find out more about these courses, go to theluminousmind.net and sign up on our email list. You can also join us on Instagram or the Luminous Mind Facebook page to find out more information. Or just simply check out the link in the show notes for this episode. Recordings for these courses will also be available on the Luminous Mind Patreon page. Join us for empowered learning for families. Now back to the episode. When, when you talk about trauma coming in through past generations, do you find like you were saying kind of like if you heal yourself and take care of some of those traumas that you won't pass them on to your children? But does that include like if your children are already raised and grown as well? Does that help them? Yeah, it, can, okay. it doesn't matter the age. The thing is like the parents is above the child and can pass down everything up from underneath. Mm -hmm. For example, if I do mass uh, rapid recode to uh, knock down the financial uh, trauma, for example, that we had in my family, um, I can, it's going to be passed down to my children, but my parents might still have that belief. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because if these traumas are erased and they are not in my way, that means they won't be in my children's way. Okay, that's but interesting. Also, they will have to, in a way that they would have to believe that because everything is in the belief system. That's interesting. And I've even seen that with uh, children that are adopted, you know, that sometimes when they finally meet back up with their parents, they find that they're so much like them. And even though they haven't been raised by that particular parent. So I, I do agree, like what you're saying, like a lot of times it's just passed through our genetics and we don't necessarily sometimes even understand why we think or feel the ways that we do. It's just kind of part of our DNA. Do you feel like there are common challenges that you've had, like working with people, like mistakes that people make when they're trying to change that mindset or trying to, you know, undo all the trauma or, you know, maybe try to get to those feelings of abundance? One thing that is really helpful when you are trying to reach something or do something bigger is you have to, first of all, the reason why we do the record is because the traumas are kind of hanging at your ankle and they Mm -hmm. are keeping you down. So you have to get rid of those. 
So that means is you have to get rid of your past in some ways, you know, and you have to be able to live in the moment present. So those are the most common error. People want something, but they're thinking that, okay, I want this because I don't like what I have right now. Okay. And what I want for next year is going to be so much better. I'm going to be so better off that way. But then you're telling your, yourself that right now you're not happy, you're not satisfied. So that way is your identity today is not matching the identity that you're trying to reach next year. And that's what comes in the feeling. You have to feel it today mm -hmm. if you want to get it next year. Because the feeling that you have today, if you think that you want something better, that means you're not satisfied, you're not happy. And then you're trying to reach to a place where, well, when I reach there, I'm going to have more money, I'm going to be healthier, I'm going to be in a relationship. So that way I'm going to be better. So right away you see that your current reality isn't really matching your desire reality and you're never going to reach it because you're going to be oscillating like I was doing. As soon mm -hmm. as you're going to be reaching your goal, mm, those sabotaging beliefs will kick in. And usually those are, I'm not worthy, I don't deserve it, I'm not capable, I don't belong, I am not perfect, and I am so insignificant. What we must understand right from the beginning is that you have to feel happy right now. You have to be feeling satisfied, abundant, healthy, so it matches the feeling of your desired reality. And then as you match those identity, as you move closer to your desired reality, well, it, it, the desired reality is accepting yourself because you are already it. You are feeling abundant. But if you feel doubt, not worthy, not deserving, then you're going to be go going back to the same where you started. Yeah. Well, and it kind of sounds like, I mean, you're always fighting that subconscious, kind of like you were saying. Is there a difference between, because, uh, you know, in your title, you're the super conscious uh, creator coach. Is that different than that subconscious? Uh, and that's what you're doing, kind of feeling that super conscious to the point that that's controlling your subconscious in a way. I mean, is that yeah, kind of that's working, it. working. Yeah. Oh, okay, that's awesome. Well, and how do you feel like that paradigm has changed over time and with experience with neuroscience? It sounds like, you know, as a fitness coach and you were kind of always working on this self-improvement kind of mentality, um, but what do you feel like has been the biggest paradigm changer for you about that? Well, for me, it's just that we are unlimited. We keep being influenced by our outside world. We look out the news and we read the paper and everything is terrible. So of course we're going to be in a terrible state of mind. <laughs> because yeah, yeah. So what I've learned through all these years is that you have to detach yourself to all of this because then you're going to be, you become controlled by the outside world. Mm -hmm. And of course, I don't know if you ever talk to people about big goals, but usually people tend to, you know, instead of encouraging you, oh, yes, that's wonderful. Yeah, go for it. They're always going to come up with, yeah, but. And then this can really, you know, it's kind of uh, crushing your goals. So one thing is that I have learned to detach myself from the outside world because I don't want to be controlled by all of that. And also I've learned to, you know, live uh, enjoy the moment present. I used to be always working all the time. And because I had this misconception or belief system that, you know, in order to be successful, you have to work hard. It's not true. It's just that, you know, once you've gotten rid of all the resistance, you can really, really flow towards all your goals. And that's when you, your thoughts become, become things. And in the Magnetic Mind program, once you've got rid of all your traumas and resistance, 
we call it the awakening and you cross the wizard gate. And once you cross the wizard gate, you do anything you want. And, you know, instead of struggling to reach somewhere, it flows. And when you become a magnetic conscious creator is you don't have to really worry about what's next is it's going to come up to you. You become very intuitive. You learn to listen, observe, and explore because in a way when i was doing my work and each time i would complete someone something i was always looking for something to do more and more instead now i just okay i'm done with my work i'm going to celebrate because i've accomplished something but then now i have to sit and see what is my next step and as a conscious creator your answer will come very vividly. And that's what is um, so wonderful about being a conscious mind creator because you don't have to just wander and doing things without really knowing if this will be the solution. Yeah, so, that's interesting. Yeah. That's really where the fight is always coming from. I think that always that resistance, that one step back, one step forward kind of mentality because you are fighting you know, is this the right direction and always doubting yourself. And so what you're saying is that you work less basically because you trust kind of what you're leading yourself towards. Is that kind of what you're talking about? Yeah, I trust the process. Yeah. I don't doubt it. It's because the recording has worked. Without recording, you know, it's kind of hard to get rid of all these limiting belief. Mm-hmm. Because fear and doubt is like, oh my gosh, it's everybody's like controlled by that. Well, and we are creators at heart, I feel like. I mean, we all have something that we're here to kind of do and create, but we have to kind of trust that process. With that wizard gate, is that what you're meaning? Like, that's where we can kind of come to the place of our creation, you know, like where that creative side of us can kind of flow um, when we hit that wizard gate. Is that what you're talking yes, about? That's when instead of, uh, you know, before that, it's like there's always a little bit of obstacle. Uh, towards. And oftentimes when you reach an obstacle, then you're kind of set back. Sometimes you just go back to where you were. And that's where most people spend their lives. You know, they Mm -hmm. try to do something better. And then all of a sudden there, it's something comes up, a fear, a worry, uh, a doubt, and then up, it's probably not for me. I'm going to back off and then remain in my unsatisfied situation. But, you know, once you cross that and, you know, it's going to be uncomfortable crossing the wizard gate, you know, you're going to have to um, take charge and go for it. But then, yes, you become, uh, your perception is uh, different. You see different things. And also by observing, that's the problem with our society. We're so caught up in our daily grind that we just keep going and going. And, you know, we have opportunities presented to us every hour of the day, but Mm -hmm. do we see those opportunities? It's because most of the time you're so, oh my gosh, I have got things to do. I've got places to go, um, you know, and then you miss all those opportunities. But being a conscious um, magnetic mind creator is things come to you and you trust the process and you know that uh, when something comes up, that's your answer. And the funny thing is like, when you do a rapid recode, yes, you will feel it. A lot of emotion will come up, but then eventually in the same day or maybe the following days or even throughout the night, you might have some dreams. And here's your answer. Something is presented to you and you, by doing the recode, we kind of knock down all those boulders. So the fear is not so big. The worries are disappeared. The doubt is gone. So you take your decision. That's and interesting. It's by, it's by taking decision that you, you take action and eventually uh, you reach your goal. Yeah. Well, and uh, I think, you know, a lot of us feel like we are kind of living in that present moment, but many of us are just, living in it in a state of worry, I guess, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes, like yes. we're always constantly 
you know, like, how are we going to feed our family today? Or how, you know, and we're kind of living in that scarcity mindset in a way. I guess I'm just intrigued by it because it sounds like you dive so much deeper than just like, you know, doing a gratitude journal. I mean, you hear that that often sometimes helps open up that mind of abundance because you're living, you're happy with what you have instead of always thinking about what you wished you could be like. But this even sounds like you even go further than that. Like instead of just being grateful or whatever, you're diving into feeling and being that person at that moment versus uh, just feeling grateful for what you have. Is there a difference between those two? Well, the thing is, of course, you have to be grateful for what you have because you have to be happy with the present moment. Mm -hmm. But so when we do the process of the uh, rapid recode, we have the first thing we do is lenses and lenses is the goal setting. And we call this lenses because we have a one year goal. We have 90 day goal, 30 day goal, weekly, daily and daily report. So, you know, the lenses is we have the long lens, which sees very far in the future. And then the 90 days lenses, which is the, your 90 day goal setting, is to bring you closer to the one year goal. The 30 days vision is to bring you closer to your 90 day goals. And the weekly is to bring you closer to your 30 days. And then daily is, you know, you have to be able to know what you're going to do to get closer to your goal. And, you know, the lenses are the foundation of the whole program. If people don't do their lenses, they are not taking action. Mm -hmm. And if they're not taking action, nothing's going to happen. And when we do the lenses daily, we do have an intention of the day. And also we ask what we're grateful for. So this is kind of make them realize, yes, today it might be stormy or, you know, California might be on fire, but at <laughs> least I've got something here to be grateful for. And that's what it is. You know, once you start looking around what you have, that's when you're going to start feeling abundant. So yes, the gratitude journal is important and, you know, this is a key to the success because if you're not satisfied of what you have now, you're never going to reach your goal. Well, and a lot of what you're talking about, you're already talking about maybe people who already know what they want, but it sounds like you work with people who really don't know what they want a lot that maybe they feel like they're just kind of floating in life and they don't really have any direction. Is that true? Do you work with people who like you as a fitness coach maybe had a goal of where you wanted to be, but there may be people that's like, well, I don't even see the relevance in this in my life because I don't even know what I want to create or do or be. Well, oftentimes these people is because they've never really put the time to think about it, you know, mm -hmm. or they're so uh, stuck in their, uh, you know, uh, daily grind that they, they've never looked into it. One time I was telling uh, one of my fitness clients that her children were gone. Her last one was gone. And then so I said, oh, what are you going to do now? And she said, I don't know. And I said, isn't there something you would like to do? Or, and what are you good at? And she had no idea. She said, I'm not good at anything. And I have no idea what I should be doing. And these people, they need to work with a coach, obviously, because, you mm -hmm. know, it's very helpful to have someone guide you in finding your true purpose. But, you know, oftentimes when people don't know what they want, it's because they've never really thought about it or there's so much of a limiting belief that for them it's impossible. And again, the sabotaging belief comes in. Well, I don't deserve to be wealthy. I don't deserve to have a great job. I am not worthy to have a great relationship. So those are just due to the belief system. And once you teach them or even when you start recording these people, they might see different things. 
Mm -hmm. Well, and I do think uh, when you were talking about, you know, once your kids leave and you, you're like, I really don't know what I want. Many of us are in that as, uh, especially as mothers, stay at home mothers, uh, homeschooling mothers, you know, are super tied up to what our children are doing or whatever, um, that we haven't been thinking about it. How do you feel like if we don't do that ourselves, how do you feel like that affects our children? She's written a book called Ordinary Parents Raising Extraordinary Children. Do you feel like that that fits into it? Uh, you know, like, yeah, we can be there as mothers or fathers taking care of our kids' needs, but if we don't ever have our own drive or our own goals, uh, that that might affect our children in the future as well. Do you feel like there's a connection there? Yes, of course. Okay. Like I was saying earlier, your children will probably duplicate whatever you do in life. And the thing also, it's important to show your kids that, you know, our children oftentimes see us like, oh, she's just my mom and things like that. The problem is as a mother, you know, oftentimes we don't think of ourselves. You know, mm -hmm. we always put people before us and we neglect ourselves. Unfortunately, some mothers always going to remain that way, like, oh, well, I'm just a mom. I don't deserve it. I'm not worthy and things like that. But well, and maybe they don't really care about the money because they have a partner that's making the money. You know what I mean? Like, and it isn't, it isn't always about money, right? It's more about yes. living a life that's fulfilled. Yeah. Exactly. Sorry. But it's important to really be, you know, if you're always there for other people and you don't really do anything for yourself, you're not expressing yourself. Not expressing yourself, then you're repressing yourself. <laughs> yeah. And then this leads to other problems. You know, if you don't express yourself, more likely you might fall into a depression because that's what depression is all about. It's, yeah, we're, we're all meant to be creators is what I was meaning. Like, exactly. And, and that can be very discouraging. You know? Exactly. And creating something, it's a, it's a way of expressing yourself. Mm hmm and Something you have to offer to the world kind of thing. Exactly. And, you know, I love to work with, you know, stay at home mom that kids are gone because these women are so capable, mm -hmm. but they are, you know, oftentimes they're caught up in a pattern that, you know, I've been serving people all my life and now I have to do something for myself. It's sometimes it can be a little difficult to comprehend for them, but, you know, uh, especially if you are a mom and all your kids are gone to college and you are about 50, 55, you may have another 30 to 40 years to live. Might as well do something for you, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, and it can be super inspiring to your children or grandchildren as they watch you do those things as well, I think. I mean, oh, yes. if yes. that continues to be your source of concern, I would think that that would be something you'd want to do just for them, just to show them like anything is possible. Because as mothers and fathers, we all want something even better for our children, I think. But sadly, when we don't live that ourselves, we uh, limit our children to what we've been doing almost. Exactly. So, yes. Okay. Following in the DNA pattern. Mm -hmm. Of you, <laughs> you yeah. know, what we're doing. Well, and let's talk a little bit more about your book, The Ordinary Parents Raising Extraordinary Children. Like, why did you write that book and kind of what's the main point of the book or the ideas of the book? Okay, so I wrote this book because when I started working with Bob Proctor in uh, 2012, the, the technique that uh, Bob teaches, I realized that I had created certain things in my youth when I was a teenager using the same technique he, he taught me. And I realized that this is like, it's magical. But the thing is, the reason why I wanted to write the book is I work with people one-on-one -on -one every day. And I realized that people don't really, they're not aware of their potential. And, you know, of course, they don't teach this in our school system. That's the main reason why I wrote the book. I said, people have to know this about this because we are raising our children to be little robots. You know, mm -hmm. learning this technique really changed my life because when I began working with Bob, I was not in a good place and it really turned my life around. But for me, it's like I see children 
and parents wanting to get them to be successful. We often see parents getting their children in school very young, trying to get them to read and trying to do science at a very young age. They're trying to teach them things so they will be better off than them. But it's not what you learn that will make you better off. It's really certain things that you have to learn. For example, for me, education starts at home. I was a stay-at-home mom. And, you know, if you can teach your children to be a creator, you know, letting your child to express themselves, letting them choose what they want to do. And, you know, the thing is, we constantly are choosing for our children, which is not really helpful in the future. And that's kind of what happened to us, you know, in, in some ways, our parents chose many things for us as well, right? Exactly. And so we're not teaching really to take major decision. And then they fall into the trap of conformity. You know, they get to school and then in school, you have to pay attention. You cannot really be daydreaming. So it's like a, it's a pattern that we keep repeating one generation after the other. And then after that, we wonder why children now are seeing therapists or using medication to be able to pay attention. And, you know, this is so, it's really not the right way to fix our society with medication or therapy. It's just by teaching them, you know, the subject of the self-conscious, the unconscious and the superconscious should really be taught in our school system because it's the foundation of, of who we are. And we don't even know, they don't even teach us <laughs> who we are. <laughs> Of course, you're going to see people walking around confused and, you know, going crazy. It's because, you know, we are not really being taught the right things. Or if we are being taught certain things, sometimes it's not really true because everything is a man construct, you know, going to college, you don't have to go to college to be successful. You don't have to be, uh, have a lot of experience to be successful in business, but, you know, we just keep telling this to our children and we believe in those things. So once uh, we want to launch our business, those uh, untrue thoughts come to us and we say, well, who do I think I am to be doing this? And then we retrieve to our comfort zone and all our lives, we wish we would have done something. (laughs) We will return to our show after a word from our sponsors. For the ultimate in backcountry comfort, check out the high quality gear of Teton Hammock Company. Whether you're going on an overnight trip or a week long adventure, the ultralight outdoor equipment from the Teton Hammock Company will keep you warm, dry, and sleeping like a baby. Their products are made of top quality materials that outperform all others. Check them out at tetonhammocks.com with an S. That is tetonhammocks.com. Hang with the best. Teton Hammock Company. Now back to the episode. Well, and I think that's kind of where we're seeing a lot of anger with our kids is that we're telling them like, if they follow this certain pattern, they'll be successful with a good job. I'm putting that in air quotes, um, a good job working kind of for someone else. But I really think that the true happiness really comes to doing the thing that you are meant to do or the thing that you, you know, becoming your true self and then, and kind of working for yourself versus, you know, having to have the good job to work for somebody else. Would you agree with that? Like where our frustration, depression, you know, all that stuff comes from as uh, adults kind of leads back to those limiting beliefs, basically of what we were taught as kids. Yes. The thing also is that uh, we, um, depression today, and I think when you look at depression uh, among children, you know, the thing is we are all creator, children or adult. But the thing is, if you don't, you know, with our social media and video games and things that are, we're supposed to be creating something and we are made of energy. I mean, all of us are like a fireball of vibrating energy. And if you have a group of young children that are not really doing anything, meaning they're sitting, uh, playing games, then they are not using their energy properly. So there's a huge amount of energy 
that they have to get rid of. And this energy should be used by climbing the tree, digging holes and running around. But, you know, children are not doing this anymore. They are at home playing video games. So therefore they're not creating. And if you are not creating, you are repressing your energy. And when you repress your energy, oftentimes you will be anxious, worry, and then this turns into depression. Mm -hmm. So it's all linked together. You know, if you have someone that is always active, expressing themselves, and also with children, you know, playing ball, uh, running out, this is a way of expressing the children. And uh, if they are not doing this anymore, there will be some sort of, um, I don't know, it's a little worrisome. Well, and I agree with that. Like you said, our bodies are full of energy and we need to use that energy. It seems like too, the more we use the energy, the more our life becomes, we become more um, uh, full of, I don't know, excitement and love and all of those things. We become more creative in some ways too. Like we're just meant, our bodies are meant to be used and worked. Does that make sense? Like Yes. yes. And you know, the talent that we have, we all have different talents and those are really uh, a key for you to find out what you should be doing. If you're good in sport, if you're good at drawing, you know, I've seen a lot of uh, parents trying to change their children's um, degrees at the university because, you know, they're musicians, they, they want to do art and, you know, parents come in and they say, well, you know, that's another misbelief that artists are not making money. So oftentimes you have some teenager, they want to go into music or art and the parents don't want them to do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> have something that will get you a good job. And also you don't have to, you can still have a job and be happy. You know, you can still be working for someone and be happy. It just depends. There is people that love their job. And I, I would think these people are fine doing that. But you know, if you keep telling yourself, oh, I would like this, I would like that. And you know that you can do better and, I would just highly recommend go for it and, you know, hire someone that has been there, done that, and, you know, people to guide you through the process. And it's kind of funny because, you know, you see a lot of people, I mean, education is very expensive here in the United States. Uh, you know, we have three kids in college and, you know, it's, it's outrageous. But, you know, when it's time for a grown up to really find their way or find their true purpose, why not hire a coach? And oftentimes people are skeptical about hiring coach. And But you know, hiring a coach is so efficient because you have someone to help you uh, keep you accountable on the work. And you know, um, someone that has been there, done that, and someone that can help you through all the process and, you know, even though you work with a coach, sometimes you always get those little doubts. And then working with a coach is better because we get you out of this mode of worry or doubting the process. Mm -hmm. Definitely. I find that super helpful. I was watching the video on your website where Bob Proctor was actually talking about that, that it was a, like a gateway to somebody else's brain you know, that, you, that gives them like all of the mistakes and all of the things that they made. You know, you have that knowledge when you work with that coach. So super important. Do you want to give us like three key points to your message, you know, how to become the person you want to have the life that you want through those mental processes that you're talking about of becoming a conscious creator? Sure, of course. Well, one thing that I want to let people know is if you think already that you want something more, go for it. You know, you're not going for it because of the doubts. So especially when the desire is already there, I would just go for it and, you know, spend the money that you need to get someone to help you get to where you want. Because, you know, life is short. And if you doubt today and you don't take action in 10, 15, 20 years, you will regret it and you will still be doubting. <laughs> 
if I would have done it, what would it be now? And the second one is be happy with what you want. I mean, be happy with what you have right now, you know, and focus on what you want rather than what you don't want. So if you want to earn more money, find a way that you could earn more money. Because if you focus on what is not good in your life today, you're going to get more of it. And you have to change your thought pattern in order to create better results in your life. And the third one is live today as if it would be your last day. You know, enjoy the present moment. Um, try to call your children or, you know, share some good moment with some of your friends because life is short. Life is short and we have to do things that we love and we are creator. So therefore we should be creating something and we should be creating our lives instead of letting the conformity of society lead us towards what we don't want. Yeah, and to live that life now. That's exactly. another thing that I think as mothers, we, we always think, oh, when my children are gone, maybe I'll do this or that. Don't you think we can do those things in tandem and still be successful as a parent as well as uh, successful in our, you know, whatever we want to create? Of course, because, you know, if the mother is doing something that is uh, good for her, something that she can express herself, she'll be a better mother. You know, a happier mother. Mm -hmm. So it's important to, you know, find some time for yourself instead of always giving and giving, because the truth is we should always be first. Yeah. And um, so once you treat yourself properly and with love and with compassion and with care, then you'll be turning around and do the same thing for other people. Yeah. It's an oxygen mask. You know, sometimes you have to put it on yourself in order to save and help your children. And I think that is just poignant with what you're talking about with the DNA, you know, that comes through all those generations that sometimes we have to, to stop it in order to save the younger people that come under us. So what is some feedback that you've received with other people? I noticed that on your website, you have some case studies. Does that go with like uh, maybe what people have said about your work or is that uh, different things that you've studied as well? Well, the uh, video on my website, it's about the paradigm shift, the letter stick person. And um, those case study, it's very like we did that with children in Africa mm -hmm. and these kids, they had nothing and they turned around and created things. So it doesn't matter where you're from, uh, what language you speak, there's always something that you can do to really uh, have a better life. The thing is, if you don't take action towards a better life, nothing's going to really happen. It's just a matter of choice also. And, you know, oftentimes people that don't have desires, they tend to be a little bit more pessimistic or depressed. So it's always good to have a vision because if you have no vision, you know, what's the reason to get up in the morning and it just drives you out of bed and, you know, it's exciting. Believe in yourself that you can do it because we are created to God's image and we can all create marvelous things. Definitely. And I've noticed even on your book that you have several different people that have written, you know, great things about that book and how it's helped them, you know, change their thinking process around parenting and then how that's helped them be more successful as well. So do you feel like there's habits in your personal life that would help create better learning about the goal or the mission that you're going to accomplish while here? The thing is discipline. You know, being an, a former athlete and a trainer, discipline is one thing that you have to uh, maintain when you want to reach something bigger. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, it's by doing little step uh, every day that eventually you're going to reach the big picture. And for me, I've since a very young age, I've been in sport. So therefore I had to train every day. So this has developed a huge discipline uh, with me and it's kind of part of my life. Mm -hmm. And I know that by doing certain things, you know, eventually you get a result. And that's why maintaining discipline and taking action every day it's very important because that's how you're going to reach your goal. 
Well, and for some reason, uh, whenever I think of the word discipline, I always think uh, it sounds very painful. And like a lot of times you're like, oh, I'm just not very disciplined. But I think consistency is almost a better word because, yes, it, I think, yes. Yeah, because when we take those consistent actions, every day we're going to be, I mean, when we think about that in terms of exercise, you know, just it's, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're being super strict or disciplined or whatever, but it just means that every day you're making action. There's that consistent effort every day that you're working on that. Correct. Um, And it feels less painful. (laughs) Yeah, I know. Discipline is like, it made me think about, you know, when you say you're disciplining children in the Uh old time, you know, it's like, yeah, it's true that it's, it's not a good word. It sounds very uh, harsh in, in a way, but, but really it's just all you're really talking about is consistency and being in sports. That's what we learn that we learn yes. that every day we have to work at that to be better. So mm-hmm. that's yes. great. So what are some long-term goals that you have for yourself and how is that working into the legacy that you hope to leave? Well, one of my main goal is really to teach this uh, process to many people because uh, we all need it. But also I'm an entrepreneur, so I, I have multiple businesses. I still have my fitness business, but we taken a big decision. My husband and I, uh, we are thinking to leave California and um, I would like to open a bed and breakfast in Annapolis, uh, Maryland oh. and uh, open an, uh, a little restaurant. Oh, that's cool. Uh, do you have any final parting words for our listeners? And then give us your contact information, how we can work with a coach. Is it an expensive coaching or is it something that, uh, you know, people hire coaches all the time for their children in different ways. And it only makes sense that we would want to hire our own coach. Anyway, give us some well, information like that. Actually, this is a, such a bargain. I mean, I'm used to uh, paying much, much higher ticket coaching when you do the uh, master class of the magnetic mind, it's a 12 months process. And we meet five times a week. One time is for uh, teaching and the other four times is to do a recode. So we just uh, meet up online and do a recode on a certain field. It could be about money or anything. And it's uh, $49 a week. And there's nothing that affordable out there for uh, personal development. Everything is usually very high, uh, one payment. But the good thing about this is like you sign up for my program and you're going to see it within the first week that you're changing. So it's very encouraging. And children can do that. Parents can do that. And it's very efficient. And, um, you know, you get results right away. And I also have a rapid recode challenge, which is a a seven week program and it's a $99. And with this program, it's a little bit like an introduction to the masterclass. It's all recorded online and there is also meditation and a recode in each session. That's great. And you just access that through the contact page on your website. Is that right? For the uh, challenge, it's a little uh, membership area. And then for the masterclass, you have access to a membership area as well, because all the uh, classes are recorded and you have access to the past training. It's on Zoom. Every week you get a a new link and um, we meet up through Zoom and Facebook. Oh, okay. All right. And yeah, you do have a Facebook page as well, correct? And do you I wanna... do have a Facebook group that I don't use much, but I'm putting the lessons there. Okay, great. So when I, I get new clients, they join the group and they have access to the uh, classes there. Yeah, I think I uh, signed up to do that as well. So, all right. Well, that's great. And what's your contact information so people can oh, find I'm out sorry. more about uh, you? I can be contacted by uh, at Magnetic Mind Coach. It's Magnetic mind coach at gmail.com or via my uh, website which is uh, lucy leblanc life coach.com okay and i'm also offering i have some uh, free recode uh, i offer workshops and then uh, it's just an introduction of the course and i also do a recode at the end of the workshop so people can experience the what that's how like. it feels like okay and you can access the free workshop recalls on facebook or where i have on my facebook uh, yes it's there okay 
All right. I'll check that one out too as well. So like I said, the recall therapy is something that I find super important. I have found it very impactful in my life previously. So I would just imagine that this is an extension of that. And then I love the idea of a coach. Like I said, we often get our children coaches, you know, we make sure that they have the best education of becoming their best selves, but we often don't think about as parents, how getting ourselves a coach often is more helpful sometimes to our kids than even hiring one for them. Exactly. Uh, so again, we've been talking with Lucy LeBlanc. Uh, you can find more about her at our, her website. And she has a Facebook page. I found her on LinkedIn and then also Instagram. But I'm going to be sure to make all those connections on our website as well. But thank you so much, Lucy, for coming on The Luminous Mind and talking to us about you know, how to find our best self and create the life that we want through using that conscious creator method as well. I appreciate it. Thank you, Rebecca, for having me on the show. It was amazing. And I really love to spread the word about this because, you know, it's so helpful. It can really make you take a different path in life. And it's exciting. It's very exciting. And I think our society really needs this at this time because sometimes it's a little scary. And I will send you my uh, uh, webinar uh, link if you want to put it on your website. Oh, sure. Yes, I would love that. Love to be part of that as well. So thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you for listening to The Luminous Mind. Music featured in this episode from Scott Holmes. To learn more about our podcast, check us out at theluminousmind.net.